Greetings everyone. This is part three of our analysis of the Catalan opening from Black's perspective. This is for all you players uh, that perhaps play the Nimzo Indian, Queen's Indian, or even if you play Queen's Gambit Declined and you're just looking for a line against the annoying Catalan. So, if you've been following the first two parts of the series, you will notice that we've been focusing on this line right here. After d4, knight f6, 2c4, e6 is our Nemzo Indian attempt or Queen's Indian attempt. Knight f3, so the Nemzo Indian is out and now we can either play b6 going into a queen's indian or d5 with additional options and here's the start of our catalan and the line that we've been focusing on is after g3 is the capture on c4 bishop g2 and bishop b4 check and for this uh, part, we are, fo are following the game between Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces and Vladimir Kramnik with the black pieces from Vikan Zay 2010. So after Bishop B4 check from Kramnik, Bishop D2 was played and A5 is the line that we are specializing in and if you've been following my videos you would know the ways to deal with the fee and keto bishop in this case we are talking about the bishop on g2 and I'll repeat it again one way to deal with the bishop in that position is to blockade it therefore you will see many formations for instance in the king's indian attack you will see pawn on d5 c6 and b7 so that the bishop is blocked sometimes uh, a player will block his own bishop in for instance in this case if white had his pawns on say e4 and d5 and black had his pawns on e6 excuse me e5 and uh, d6 white would be blocking his bishop in another way to deal with the bishop is to trade it off and this is why you see in many lines whether it's a Sicilian dragon or Pyrrhic you'll see that familiar strategy of lining up queen d2 and bishop e3 followed by bishop h6 to trade off the bishop that is one strategy and number three is to apply what I like to call the scorched earth strategy which is to simply clear the area or clear the scope uh, of the bishop so that that bishop will not be will not have any targets and this is what we see in this line and you'll see what I'm talking about shortly again watch parts one and two and you'll start to remember these concepts okay so after a5 Carlson plays knight c3 now usual in, in the first two games we saw the move queen c2 followed by bishop takes uh, d2 but Carlson likes to play these kind of moves and um, you know there's really nothing uh, wrong wrong with it so knight c3 castle and a3 so sooner or later white has to play this move to win this pawn back uh, so 
it's a move that has to be done questioning the bishop besides a3 uh, Boris Gelfin had tried bishop g5 against Kramnik and that game continued b5 knight e5 right you see the challenge of the bishop the capture this rook on a8 and then you see the move rook a6 and this is what I'm talking about the scorched earth policy notice that the bishop on g2 uh, just has no targets although it is exercising influence on the diagonal there's no direct targets for it to uh, for it to uh, capture and notice too also that although this uh, b5 pawn is unprotected this knight is pinned and cannot capture right now the game continued a4 continuing to pressure black's pawn structure and B takes a4 which seems unusual it looks like black is uh, just totally destroying his pawns now Gelfan probably was expecting a more natural looking move like c6 followed by castle with again tremendous pressure on the uh, queen side but it's the mark of great players play moves like this and know when they can get away with it the game continue knight takes c4 h6 challenging the bishop bishop takes f6 queen takes f6 castle rook d8 pressuring the d-pawn of course queen takes a4 Bishop d7. And again, I want to remind you throughout the courses, notice this bishop right here. It's a strong piece, but there's no targets on the, the entire diagonal. So queen d1, bishop e8, again, threatening this pawn. And with the pressure on this pawn, it's hard for white to play e4. And for us to play e3. And you probably can guess black's next move, looking at the rook here, and the queen here. c5, just more pressure. Gelfand wind up sacrificing the pawn here, due to the pressure. d5, bishop takes c3. B takes c3 and queen takes c3. And he really did not have that much compensation for his pawn sacrifice. And in fact, he almost lost the game. But he was able to uh, draw that game. So bishop g5 is playable. And after the natural uh, move castles, black can play a move like knight c6. Again, notice the pressure here because white wants to play moves like e4. So black keeps him occupied, distracting. Again, there's a3, questioning the bishop. Bishop takes c3. B takes C3 and A4 this is a typical move in this line and it protects blacks queenside pawn constellation in different ways uh, one of the benefits is that it prevents white from playing A4 since black occupies that square and it sets up the move 
knight a5 perhaps going to b3 later sets up rook a5 and it fixes the a pawn on the dark square here where it might later be harassed by a move like queen to e7 so it's a good good move bishop g5 h6 it's important to question that bishop queen takes f6 knight d2 and we see pawn being harassed perhaps e4 being in the mix so have to act now e5 d5 knight a5 Notice white can capture this pawn here. Queen takes a4. And this pawn grab looks um, a little suspicious to me because of the vulnerability of the queen. But it can be done. Bishop g4 threatening here. And white figures, hey, I've just stolen the pawn. So he goes back, defends the pawn on e2. Queen e7. And we can see the tremendous pressure building up right here on that a pawn. Rook e1. c6. Excellent move. Just continuing to break down the white center. And notice white cannot play e4 because of the, of the uh, bishop attack on the queen so black one of the ideas is to keep attacking the center you know before white can solidify it so d takes and b takes and black is up a pawn here and has a great uh, great game despite some of his uh, weaknesses so All right, so after all of that, let's go back to the game. So after Carlson's knight c3, castle, and a3 was played. Uh, just for the record, we had just went over the move castles by white and bishop g5. So Carlson had played a3. Bishop e7 by Kramnik. Perhaps just the simple bishop takes c3, b takes c3, and c5 was called for here. But Kramnik played bishop e7, queen a4, to pick up the pawn, the c pawn, there's c6. And now black is threatening to play b5. So queen takes c4. There's b5 anyway. Queen b3. Now later on. Queen d3 was tried. Bishop a6. Remember. White is looking to play e4, so black has to play energetically here. Knight e4. There's b4. Knight takes f6, check. Bishop takes f6, check. Queen c2. Again, eyeing e4 and putting pressure on the c6 pawn. B takes a3, rook takes a3, and bishop b5. And white has a slight advantage here, but black was able to draw the game. And uh, um, that game was between um, Alexander Grischuk and Levon Aronian. Now it's a rapid game in France. 
from 2010. So instead of queen d3 here, Carlson had played the move queen b3. Bishop a6. Bishop g5. Now, if Carlson had simply played like a natural move, castle, then it would be missing the point of bishop a6, which is to play b4, hitting this knight, which is the only protector of the e pawn at the moment. So understand that. And if a move like queen c2, Knight bd7, knight e4, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, then bishop b7. And white is not going to be able to prevent this move c5 from occurring at some point. So, bishop g5 is played first, knight bd7. Bishop takes f6. G takes f6. And this is uh, definitely an act of uh, belligerency by Kramnik. After Bishop takes f6, black is also just fine. For instance, knight e4, bishop e7, rook c1, or castle. B4, Queen E3, B takes A3, B takes A3, Queen B6, Castle, and Rook AB8, and Black is just fine. But Kramnik wanted to fight here, so he played G takes F6, Queen C2, B4, Knight A4. So remember that. The themes, the clearing out of the diagonal, the G2 to A8 diagonal, or H1 to A8 diagonal, and the aggressive expansion on the queen side. Rook C8 is played, and all of this is to prepare the move C5. Another move that was acceptable was playing the queen to B8. And then moving the rook on uh, the f file to c8. So, for instance, knight d2. <clears throat> Again, white has to be careful of castling because you might be saying, why? Why does uh, white keep avoiding castling? Because there's tactics. For instance, castle uh, queen b5 attacking the e pawn. Uncomfortable moves. So knight d2, rook c8, bishop f3, b takes a3, b takes a3, and queen a7. And uh, white is, is not going to be able to really hold the control over the c5 square. Soon, uh, move, uh, for instance, rook b8, a rook a b8 will be played, and then c5 shortly after. Okay, but Kramnik played, you know, the natural move, rook c8, just getting off again, getting off to that diagonal. Now, castle and c5. Now this was the idea of the last move, is clearing the uh, rook from the a8, h1 diagonal and playing c5 of course. Now usually in these uh, type of positions, when, when white tries to liberate, excuse me, when black tries to liberate with the move c5, 
he has to be weary of opportunities from white to play d5 so although white is a down material or willing to invest material rather um, this position is very double edged because as you can see black's pawn structure is, is uh, compromised but he has the two bishops as compensation and fairly active pieces whereas white has the static advantages he has a, a solid pawn structure uh, has nice position nice central pawns and if he can just consolidate he can uh, has a good chance and especially if he can get rid of one of the bishops take that advantage away there's a good chance of winning the game here so when Kramnik played c5 he definitely calculated um, d5 so now it's just a matter of who you know who wants it more who saw who saw saw the most or who understands the position the most so after c5 Carlson played d5 e takes d5 and bishop h3 was played now none other than Gary Kasparov uh, objected to this move bishop h3 Kasparov claimed that after rook fd1 real real direct obvious looking move too d4 queen f5 rook e8 rook e8 probably bishop d6 by a little a little stronger for instance bishop d6 a takes bishop takes e2 b takes c5 bishop d1 rook d1 and white has an advantage there no doubt but instead of bishop d6 Kasparov's line is rook e8, knight takes d4, c takes d4, rook takes d4. Notice the pin on the queen on d8, queen c7, and of course, if rook c7, then there's trouble on h7 with the mating threats. White is winning, so queen c7. Rook takes d7, queen e5, queen takes e5, f takes e5, knight b6, rook c2, and knight d5, which is very convincing and strong, a uh, strong line here. So, in this line, definitely, instead of Kasparov's move rook e8 that he plays for black bishop d6 a takes and instead of the greedy bishop takes e2 a takes b4 this idea of discovery against this bishop here is probably black's best but interesting to me instead of knight c3 already and again we can analyze these side variations for a long time it's just taking this point right here it seems pretty interest interesting to me but it's very 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 complicated for instance knight takes c5 Right, keeping this bishop uh, protected, and then knight 
takes d4 for instance but it seems like black is still under um, some pressure there so with those lines c5 c5 is probably not the best move best move is bishop takes a3 excuse me bishop takes a3 b takes a3 b takes a3 then c5 and d5 does not have as much force at all and the game is quite equal so anyway back to the game c5 d5 e takes d5 was played first bishop h3 and this was a mistake according to Kasparov <clears throat> Time to play bishop b5 a takes a takes rook fd1 d4 bishop f5 knight e5 and uh, Kramnik decides not to go with h5 or h6 and Kramnik just uh, excuse me Carlson takes the pawn bishop takes h7 king g7 and knight takes e5 was played now Kramnik said that he was afraid of this move And um, the knight takes f3. It seems that this position with black's doubled f pawns is probably a little like improvement over the actual game continuation. Again, if b, bishop e4, and same move like b3. Queen takes b3, bishop takes e2, knight h4, rook b8, knight f5 check, king g8, queen c2, and black, this king looks a little bit uncomfortable, although he might be able to hold. Not a, not a um, friendly looking position. So in the game, knight takes e5 was played, f takes e5. Bishop f5 and notice Kramnik got his pawn straightened out. They look quite menacing on the queen side. Rook c6 is a good move because now the rook can defend on the uh, sixth rank if needed. Queen e4, rook h8. That move really needs no comment. I mean, Kramnik is just employing his pieces. Rooks belong on open files. There's an open h file and that move serves as a, an attacking move and defending move. But the more the, the more you look at it, you see that Kramnik is giving up, willing to give up the e5 pawn in order to activate this dark squared bishop. Because right now you see these these pawns all on dark squares. This bishop. It's kind of out of the game, so that was the uh, that was the real um, real strength behind the move rook h8 is that with this king exposed already and you know being under some psychological pressure, he's he's able to have the wherewithal to give up another pawn with check from the queen now I'm just active make sure his pieces are activated 
So after queen takes e5 check, bishop f6, queen e4, rook e8, queen g4 check, and king f8. Bishop e4. And we see the rook on c6 attacked. Again, Kasparov wanted to play bishop d7 here. And bishop takes e2. Queen h3. Bishop takes d1. Rook takes d1. Rook e, e6. Bishop takes. F takes. B3. And queen d5. And his comment is that black cannot win with such a king. So and I take it that he was talking about the exposed nature of the king. You know, in contrast to white's king, which is fairly safe. And uh, so it, it is an interesting position. But Carlson played bishop e4. Cranley played c4, which is pretty natural. Um, and he sacrifices the exchange, so we see Cranley playing in very dynamic fashion. What I find interesting about this game is that it breaks a lot of stereotypes down about Cranley. Especially over the last few years, a lot of people make comments about Kramnik being boring and drawers. And you see here, you know him just playing real dynamic and fighting game. This king is exposed. Uh, he willfully exposed his king when he didn't have to by playing g takes f6 and uh, sacrificing material. You know, and uh, doing what it takes to get a win with the black pieces at this level so he plays c4 now objectively queen d6 probably better but he plays c4 gives up the exchange and now queen h5 <clears throat> another line that was suggested was knight c5 now they have queen d5 and queen f3 attacking the bishop so if queen takes uh, c5 then this queen would capture on f6 so queen f3 e takes and king g7 and it seems <coughs> excuse me that black is um, okay with those two bishops there although he's down the exchange it seems like he has decent compensation so back to the game Carlson played not knight c5 but queen h5 rook e5 queen h6 checks king e7 and then Carlson played e4 here, which is an um, interesting move. Instead of e4, it's queen d2, probably the best. Attacking the pawn on d4 and the pawn on b4. Again, Kasparov gives queen d5 here. Threatening mate. <laughs> Queen takes b4. Check. <laughs> King e8. Queen b8. Check. Bishop d8. Now f3. Rook takes e2. Queen f4. Again with the double attack here. d3. And rook f1. And maybe black can hold. So, 
And the verdict here is that black has adequate compensation and that as far as human play is concerned, that black has the easier go of it as far as finding moves and such. Okay, so again, back to the game. Carlson played instead of queen d2, which was probably the best to move. Played e4. And d3. And look at those pawns go. This has been black's dream from the first move. Queen e3. Bishop takes e4. Knight b6. This move actually loses a piece. Instead, rook e1, bishop c6, queen c5 check, queen d6, rook takes e5, bishop takes e5, queen c2, excuse me, queen takes c4, d2, queen b3, queen d4, queen c2, bishop f3, rook d1, bishop takes d1, queen takes d1, b3, and we see the dominance here, knight c3, queen d3, knight b1, and queen c2, that's just a sample line of White's alternative. So even though he dropped a piece, he's probably still lost at this point. Those pawns are just uh, too close to uh, to home. So knight b6 was played, and the same idea. Bishop b7, unleashing a discovered attack on the queen, and. The queen has no legitimate way to protect his knight. So queen f4 was played. Queen takes b6. Queen takes c4. Rook e2. Leaving this pawn for capture but threatening checkmate in a few moves. And rook f1. And after that, Carlson <clears throat> would resign the game. There's really no answer to Bishop D4 increasing the pressure here um, on the uh, the F2 pawn. One of the um, comments that was made after the game is uh, Carlson had said before this game that frankly quote frankly the thought of losing today didn't even cross my mind and a quote from Kramnik was one of the best games I have ever played and uh, <laughs> that quote <laughs> earlier that day from Carlson he actually put it on his Facebook today Quote, today I'm going to crush Vladimir Kramnik like a bug. That was Carlson on Facebook. Now that's allegedly because you don't know who's running these accounts. <laughs> but it is it is funny. Um, so this line is pretty dangerous. Then, uh, so it's, kind of, it's, it's double edged. So that's really, if you want to try to win with black, you have to accept uh, risk. You can see that um, Kramnik definitely did that and it worked out for him. And when I say this line is dangerous, I'm talking about uh, White's playing the simple knight c3. Because if, again, if you remember the other games went uh, queen c2. That's like your main, your main line. Queen c2, then black plays bishop, takes d2, check. And then white either plays queen to uh, queen takes d2 or knight takes d2. But in this game knight c3 was played, and uh, 
we saw some real dynamic dynamic play from uh, both sides so anyway that's part three and hope you enjoyed that and as much as I enjoyed that game and uh, I'll see you on the on uh, the next you know the next video on part part four because we're still not uh, finished with the Catalan yet from the black perspective okay see you next time